The Department for Transport has been looking at van usage in the UK for almost 15 years. As opposed to lorries, about 80% of vans hardly spend any time on the motorways at all. Often they're used for the final part of the journey for products and services, the so-called last mile. Today I'll be looking at this, the Peugeot e-boxer. Can the running cost advantages and emphasis on driver comfort overcome any anxieties that potential buyers have about the range? Let's have a look. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. The van we have today is the snazzily named e-boxer panel van professional L3 H2435. It has an expected price of £57,000 excluding VAT but including the government grant. It's an electric van with a 70 kilowatt hour battery and an 120 horsepower motor and ours comes in Bianca White. The van has a robust feel, plenty of height and wing mirrors that look resilient. One other option we've seen on other e-boxer vans are protective plastic wheel arches but uh, our van doesn't have those. We'll get onto storage in a minute but this van is close to 6 meters long and about 2.3 meters high, which is a lot of capacity. Peugeot tell us it's the best in class. Boxer vans come in three body sizes based on carrying capacity from 11.5 to 15 cubic meters. For comparison purposes, the Citroen e-dispatch can carry a load of 5.8 cubic meters. The gross vehicle weight varies from 2.7 to 3.5 tons. It is effectively the same as the most recent diesel version, except for this logo. And the complete lack of that diesel chug and smell when you turn it on. Peugeot claims to have the best class load width, with 1.42 metres between these wheel arches. That's coupled with two doors that are over 2 metres tall and can open 180 degrees. The e-boxer is offered as a traditional panel van, or as a windowed van. So, pretty standard, you have a key that you can unlock here. Once you get in, you pop the key in, turn and hold for it to boot up. You've got your power on the side and a uh, Almost a little old-fashioned manual handbrake here, but everything else is fairly modern. Just to my left, you've got drive, neutral, and reverse. So, first thing you're going to notice is that this looks like it's from a previous generation. We're hoping that in the future iterations, it's going to look a lot more modernized. So driver side adjustment is really basic. On our model, you can see we've got these knobs here which can move the back seat forward and back. This one adjusts the lumbar support. You can use this lever at the bottom to move forward and back, but unfortunately, if you have a short torso like me, there's no height adjustment, so. To my left, we have a two passenger bench seat, two glove compartments, one large one here and the smaller one that actually does fit my gloves. There are some weird things in here. Next to the 12 volt DC charger, there's a cups holder here, which is pretty shallow. I just feel like if you were to really pull off, you're gonna have an accident. <laughs> For the rest of it, you'll find some pretty standard features, although you can kind of see that there are three options, at least we didn't get here, but the rest of your standard safety features, you've got your air conditioning and right at the top is a kind of old fashioned five inch uh, small screen display for the van's more advanced functions. So these vehicles are produced in Europe and then shipped to Turkey for conversion to electric vehicles. And nowhere is that clearer than when you look at the dials. On your left you have the speedometer, the fuel gauge, the coolant temperature and then your revs on the right. A rev meter for an electric vehicle, that's the first. So we've all done that thing where we're driving the van and we're looking through the rear view mirror and we just see the panel in the back. So what Peugeot has done is integrated some rather useful information into the rear view mirror regarding like the battery status and this power. 
We're disappointed to find in a van close to £60,000 that it doesn't come with a rear parking camera, standard. MG managed to fit one into the ZS for only 28000 In the rear of this van, you can transport a large payload of up to 740 kilograms, which you can secure with these conveniently placed tie-down hooks. There are eight in this model. The charge ports are down here. It supports 7 kilowatt hour charging, which will take 12 hours, but it also supports 22 kilowatt hour charging and will get a full charge in 9 hours. If you can access a 50 kilowatt DC charger, you can get from 0 to 80% in 1 hour. So alongside that rear camera, you will also need to add upgrades if you want things like blind spot detection, rear traffic alerts, front passenger airbags, active safety braking and lane departure warnings. There's a surprising lack of space under the bonnet. Ooh, there we go. Normally, when the company swaps out a diesel for an electric, you gain enough space for a frunk. But this is just packed with electrics. So first thing you'll notice on a van like this is that visibility is pretty good. Except for this huge support structure, which is blocking a significant part of my view. <laughs> Moving off is fairly straightforward. Hold down brake, press drive. It's worth noting that there is no extra regen B mode. One of the reasons this vehicle feels so antiquated is that Peugeot and Citroen's other passenger vehicle just seems so much more modern. They're so much more advanced than this. Right at the top is a kind of old-fashioned small screen it should be bigger it's only five inches and it's tiny and it's all the way down there so for me to have to keep looking over there it just doesn't feel safe the WLTP is close to 140 miles so if you drive 20 miles a day a single charge will last you a week also missing is any kind of heads-up display pairing the phone with the van was easy enough just using Bluetooth but there isn't any Apple CarPlay or any sort of seamless Android way of connecting the vehicle which is a bit weird. Another weird omission is no real indication of how much charge I'm putting back when I'm braking. That said it has a top speed of 75 miles per hour so you'll have no problem sitting at the speed limit on motorways. While £60,000 does sound like a sizable investment, you're getting a ton of space and relatively low running costs. It is worth remembering that the standard equipment is fairly basic, so to make it usable, you are going to have to pay a little extra.